Okay, so I'm back here with the same scene. We're continuing here with Radiance Particles. Now, in the previous video, you saw how to go ahead and activate the Radiance Particles. You saw some of the basics. And I went ahead and described some of these parameters to you. In this video, we're going to get into a little bit of a more advanced topic. We're going to talk about how to squeeze as much render performance as we can out of Radiance Particles. Okay, so you've already seen that Radiance Particles can take a good while to render. And it's a little bit slow if you're not sure what you're doing. So the idea here is to try to get the best possible render speed with acceptable quality uh, as soon as possible. That's the idea because we don't want to sit here and wait for a render too long. We want to see how we can balance out speed and quality to give us the best of both worlds. Okay, That's a little bit difficult to do if you're not familiar with any of these settings. So let's go ahead and let's see what settings affect speed here the most and which ones we could tweak to get ourselves some... Uh, some good performance okay so we've already seen how long it takes to render out with 64 rays here and a density of 0.1 we also saw how the rebuild option down here can help us to uh, to freeze up our radiance particles map which can be pretty useful and we also saw how to use the output window here to uh, get some information here related to our render which is extremely important okay. now before we continue there's a couple of key things that I want you to keep in mind as we work with radiance particles Number one, irradiance particles are view dependent, just like uh, when we were looking at importons, and very similar to final gathering. Okay, if I have rebuild turned off, essentially I'm freezing the irradiance particles map. I can rotate my camera around a bit and do a render from a different angle. And what you're going to notice is that the irradiance particles don't get anything that's outside the view of the camera we end up with a pretty uh, pretty bad result here which is obviously no good we can see that we end up with this nasty artifact in back here that's because uh, radiance particles work with importons and radiance particles and importons are were designed for as an importance driven algorithm so you can see that it didn't render out too nicely back here and uh, over here where the camera was able to uh, to capture some of that area it did it did a really good job but right here it didn't so that's one thing you want to keep in mind. Let me go ahead and close that. Let me use the left bracket key a couple of times to go back to our previous view. There we go. Okay. And yeah, let me go ahead and bring back that render. So what are the two main things that are going to affect render speed as well as the render quality when using Radiance Particles? The first thing that's going to impact render time dramatically is the density up here for the importons. Right now it's set to point 0.1, which isn't really a lot. Now, the default setting, if you remember, was 1, and that is overkill. That's just way too many importons, especially if you start using the max step setting and start bouncing some of those importons around in your scene. Now you're going to get yourself some really long render times. However, keep in mind that a good amount of density is needed of importons in order to get yourself a good irradiance particle render. So that's another key thing to keep in mind. Despite the fact that lots of importons at high density equals high render times, it also means better quality in the end for your radiance particles. And the second setting that controls the speed and the quality of radiance particles is the rays parameter down here. The lower the amount of rays, the lower the quality, but the faster the render. The higher the amount of rays, the higher the quality, but the slower the render is going to take. Okay, so it's very important to understand that. Now, there's one other key thing here. Since the rays parameter and the density parameter work together, and can affect each other dramatically in terms of render times and quality. One question that you have to ask yourself is, well, what's going to give me a better and faster result? If I use a high density and a low number of rays, is that going to give me a great result fast? Or will using a low density and a high number of rays give me a great result fast? Hmm, that is a good question. And the truth is that you're going to be pretty surprised uh, when you see this. So let's go ahead and do our, a little experiment here. We're going to do a little test here to see which one renders the best and which one renders the fastest. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to turn rebuild on and I'm going to leave my rays set to 64. Now 64 is a very low number of rays. That's only good for preview rendering. You can't get away with uh, production render with 64 rays. Now the density is, uh, is now set at 1. That's a pretty high number of importance. That's going to create 
hundreds of thousands of importons, which is actually a very large amount of importons, and in many cases, it's overkill. It's too many. You really don't need that many, and you're just adding wasted render time to your work. But we're going to go ahead and leave this at density of 1, just for testing purposes. And the raise parameter, we're going to leave at 64. Everything else we'll just leave alone. I'm going to make sure that environment is left off. I don't want uh, to use environment at the moment. I'm trying to focus on the direct lighting here uh, coming from the irradiance particles as opposed to any environment lighting. Okay, so if the density is set at 1, the ray is set at 64, let's go ahead and let's create another render. We can see the import on emission there. Going, going by pretty, pretty quick. And let's open up the output window here. And we can see already we have over 300,000 irradiance particles or importons. That is a lot of importons. In fact, I'm willing to bet that's just way too many importons for this scene. But that is the default setting. The default setting is 1. And if 1 was the default setting, then we'll go ahead and we'll use that. Okay, so it's just finished optimizing the uh, irradiance particles here. 303,271. It's a lot of irradiance particles, a lot of importons there for the irradiance particles to have to work with. Even though it's only 64 rays, that's still going to be a lot of importons that those rays have to work with. And when those rays have to work with a lot of importons, it's going to slow things down. Especially if you have a high number of rays. That's really going to slow things down dramatically. It's going to bring them to a crawl. Okay, so you can see in the lower left of the interface the status bar here for... Uh, for this phase here, we're mental race preparing the irradiance particles. Okay, that's going to take a pretty good while. So what I'm going to do is pause the video, and I'll come back when it's finished. All right, so it just finished. Let me go ahead and hide that output window. So this is what we ended up with. Took uh, down here render time, 3 minutes 44 seconds for me to render this out. And as you can see, there's a ton of artifacting all over the place, especially on the walls. Not as much on the floor and the ceiling, although the ceiling does have its fair share of artifacting, but the walls are heavily pockmarked with artifacts all over the place. And it took a whole 3 minutes and 44 seconds to render that out. Now overall, that's not really a long time, but um, let's see if we can get that, uh, that time lowered. Now that was with a density of 1, which came out to over 300,000 importons, and a raise parameter of only 64. And because the raise parameter was set to only 64, that's the reason why we're getting all this artifacting. So to get rid of this artifacting, what we could do now is increase this amount of rays to a very high number, something like 500. The problem is, when you use 500 rays with a density of 1, this render time is going to shoot through the roof. Don't be surprised if you're here for about half an hour rendering out just the irradiance particles map with those settings. But that's not what we want to do. We don't want to do that because that's a big waste of time and uh, usually you have some client that needs the work done by a specific date. So what are we going to do about this? How can we solve this problem? Well, since high density and low rays equals long render times of bad quality, let's try low density. So let's try something like 0.1. And let's try a high number of rays. So let's try 500 rays. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll render this out. But before I do, I'm going to save this image so I can compare and contrast later. I'm going to go ahead and render this out with only a density of 0.1. So it should be about 10% of the importons as there were before. Let's open up the output window. And there we go. 